Previously on the Ron Van Dam Show. Look my face. Did you get any pleasure out of it? There are places you can go where you can get the fat sucked out of you. You'll eventually be fired. Ron, do you have a problem? Die. Die. And now, today's episode. On the air everywhere, this is New England Broadcasting. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night. It's the Ron Van Dam Show. Thank you very much. Hold on tight, things can get a bit weird, if you like that sort of thing. Welcome to the program. I am Ron Van Dam. This is a Ron Van Dam show, aptly named by a person named Ron Van Dam. All right, that's enough. All right, all right, that's enough. Oh, man. Okay, can you hear it in my voice? I have a cold. It came on all of a sudden. Yesterday's show, I was absolutely fine. No tinges of any problems whatsoever as the day drew on yesterday. Started feeling under the weather. What the hell does that mean, by the way? Under the, how do you feel under the weather? What what does that even mean? It makes no sense. There's the weather, which is the reporting of the conditions of the atmosphere, but I feel under that? I, I don't understand. It makes, who came up with that phrase? (laughs) It's stupid. It's just stupid. It's like saying, oh, I was was starting to feel bad yesterday. I feel under the chicken. Makes as much sense as under the weather. What does that mean? But we just, you know, with our phrases, we just go, oh, you're not feeling well? We understand what that means. But it doesn't mean anything. I feel under the chicken today. Yeah, I started getting all nasally yesterday afternoon. Uh, all of a sudden, it sounded like I had just gone uh, scuba diving. It was uh, odd. And then my th- my throat, uh, this um, I started having a dripping down the back of my throat, um, like like my faucet was was broken. I just there was like this dripping going on. I was like, oh my god, call the plumber. Down the back of my throat, um, so I'm coughing all the time now, and it's just, um, oh, it's awful. I have to clear my throat. I have to clear the room. I have to clear my history. I have to clear my cash. It's awful. It's awful. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, my God. Did you hear that? It's so under the weather, isn't it? Here's the weather. Here's me under it. It's awful. So I didn't sleep a wink last night, um, and I don't know what that means. I uh, I didn't sleep a wink. Do I wink when I sleep? Do I go? Do I fall asleep and and wink and go? Oh, you know what I mean? Uh huh. You don't wink when you're sleeping, do you? Maybe you do. I really don't know. I, I'm sleeping. How would I know what I'm doing? People tell me, Ron, you know, you snore. Well, how, okay, I can't verify. How do you know that? I well, I hear you snoring. I don't hear me snoring. I'm sleeping. That's no consequence to me. I think it's your problem, isn't it? <laughs> Ron, you know, you have a snoring problem. You should you should have somebody look at that. Why? Uh, don't bother me. I'm sleeping. Uh, I'm fine. I don't care. Well, Ron, it's, uh, it's not good for your respiratory. I'm breathing fine. What's your problem? It's your problem more than mine. I mean, if you're going to sleep in the same room with me, whose problem is that? <laughs> it's not mine. Anyway, uh, no, no sleep whatsoever, just constantly clearing my throat. <clears throat> Let me clear my throat. It's awful. Awful. And then I talk to some of my friends, quote unquote, I use the friends thing. And whenever I say friends, I got to put the quotations marks around them because I don't know what I'm talking about. Are they Facebook friends, Ron? Are they acquaintances that you bumped into and you said, uh, how's the family and never see them again for six years? Are those your friends? What are friends to you? Friends are people that I talk to on a on an irregular basis because I talk to nobody on a regular basis. There's no point. 
I mean, I talk to them when I see them. Then I talk to them. I don't talk to them if I don't see them. That's not a point. That's I'm there. That's under the weather. That whole idea. Uh, I think being sick makes me talk faster, which is odd. Usually, people slow down when they're not feeling well. I speed up. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's in the medication that I'm taking. I took one of those uh, cold pill things that's supposed to stop the uh, runny nose and the dripping and the coughing. It doesn't do shit. It's it's it does nothing. All it does is psychologically say, okay, you put something in your mouth and you swallowed it with water. That's about it. I, I made the effort. And if you're psychologically uh, under the weather, then you're fine. Anyway, uh, not good for sleeping. So that's, that's the deal. I mean, uh, I'm doing this anyway because I'm a trooper. I'm a state trooper. I know what I'm doing. Got a call yesterday. I got two calls yesterday in the middle of the day. From uh, one was uh, was a state trooper. Uh, actually, it was a, it was a guy. He gave me his name and he said, uh, "I'm calling with the uh, the state troopers." And I thought, "Uh oh, how'd you find the body so quickly?" <laughs> That's a joke. It is a joke. I said yes, and they said yes. Um, uh, it's the uh, state uh, troopers uh, uh, fund. Um, this this fund uh, helps uh, the families of uh, of troopers. And I said, "Oh, I, I, I'm definitely for it, but I I don't have any money right now. I said I, I can't I can't do it." And he says, "Well, you've been you you've contributed so many years in the past." And I said, "Yes, that's the point. I've I have contributed so many years in the past." Why are you bothering me again? I'll tell you why you're bothering me. Because you think I'm a soft target. Cause, because I did contribute in the past, let's call Ron. He always contributes. He's a soft target. And then when I say, well, you know, I'm a little short of cash this year. You know, I can't, I can't, uh, can't help you this year. Um, they got all, all puffy about it. Go, oh, 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 don't you want to help the poor animal? You know, stop it. Just stop it. Stop manipulating me. As soon as you start bugging me, you will not get a penny out of me. Not one red cent. Don't bug me. Don't manipulate me. Don't give me sob stories. Now you're getting nothing for next year as well. As if that weren't enough, two hours later I get another phone call. And this is from the some benevolent, 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 benevolent uh, police association. And I said, I, I, I just had a phone call. I just didn't give. Um, you're supposed to say, oh, oh, I already gave, but I didn't. So I said, oh, I already didn't give, which is true. If I'm not going to give to them, why am I going to give to you? These are not police departments calling me. These are telemarketing firms who are getting 60%, probably maybe 70%. And the police organization gets maybe 30%. No. I wasn't born yesterday. I was born the day before yesterday. I'm older than you think. I know what I'm doing. It's not my first rodeo. I've seen the, the, the rodeo before with the rodeo clowns and, 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 the, and the bareback bull riding. I've been to the rodeo. The cotton candy is, is to die for. I've been to that rodeo. There's a woman that sits in the second row and her breasts practically fall out of her clothing. I've been to the ra- the rodeo. I've been to the radio as well. <laughs> it's not my first radio job. I'll tell you that right now. Oh, sorry. Excuse me while, while I wipe my nose. Oh, God, this is awful. This is awful. And I know it's going to last for a while. You don't get a cold and then the next day it's, okay, that's done. This goes on for a month at least, at least a month, probably two, where I'm going to suffer these these terrible symptoms, and that that cough will linger. It will linger around me like a like an ex girlfriend that just doesn't get what I said to them. So I, I, I'm telling, why do they call it a cold? I'm not cold. I'm perfectly fine. I'm not. I, I'm actually. I'm sweating a little bit. Um, where did that come from? What is that? You know, like you only feel this way when you've been outside and it's been cold out, so you get this these symptoms. No, a cold is a is a thing. Why do we call it that? Why do we call it a cold? Why don't we call it a hot? 
Yeah, I can't come to work today. Well, what's the matter? I think I'm getting a hot. Getting a hot? Well, yeah. I mean, you say cold, I say hot. I mean, it's just stupid. It's stupid anyway. I'm feeling under the weather. How about that? You understand that part of it? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You people, you people kill me. You really do, you people, with your little phrases, your little ways of describing things. You're very interesting people. Ah, grow up. The Ron Van Dam Show is intended for mature audiences. Oh, so that's what ironic means. Yes, honey. Yes, it does. I could go into some of the uh, news items, but to be honest with you, there's so many other places you can go to get that information. I don't think you really want to get it from me. I could tell you about that uh, that guy that Jesse uh, uh, Smollett, I believe his name is. I don't know his name. I don't really want, to, I want to care what his name is. He's on a show called Empire. I've never seen it. I don't know who he is. If I bumped into him in the street, I'd say, I don't know who you are. I I don't know who this guy is. I don't know what the show is. I have no idea where it is. I, I don't know how to find it. I don't really want to watch it. I don't know what it's about. But apparently um, he uh, claimed a couple of weeks ago that he was, uh, you know, a couple of Trump uh, supporters uh, uh, beat him up and uh, because, uh, you know, because they're Trump supporters and also because they don't like homosexuals and this Jesse or Jesse, whatever his name is, uh, apparently is also homosexual. And um, the Chicago police happened. Chicago, Chicago police uh, do an investigation. And they find out that this was a setup, that this this uh, guy who was on this uh, show, this Jesse, Jesse, um, set it up, paid these guys $3,500 to uh, stage a, a beating. Uh, and it had nothing to do with anything. Apparently, uh, his motives were on this TV show. He wanted more recognition, and he thought he could get more money on his salary if he was more famous. And I don't know. Just, you know, it's disgusting, it's just disgusting to to use uh, racial uh, uh, and sexual disharmony um, in order to mani- manipulate the public. Um, horrible, horrible, horrible stuff. That's the news. Um, it's not accurate, but that's it. So get your news from some other outlet, not me. I'm here to make fun of the things that we go through every day in life. The things that don't make sense, I point them out. While most of us just swallow them like a nasty pill, I say, why are we taking this pill? It's like building the wall between the United States and Mexico, those rapists and murderers and terrorists and all the, oh my God, oh my God, my God, my God. Of course, I'm kidding. It's ridiculous. But somehow this uh, dysfunctional president just just latches onto things like a pit bull, like a child who stomps his feet and has some kind of a conniption if he doesn't get what he wants. Like, whoa, that's impressive. That's impressive. That's what a three-year-old does. <laughs> not, not a grown-up guy in his late 70s who's the president of the, of the United States and used to be the leader of free world, free world. not anymore because he's just ruined that thing. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's a three-year-old kid in there. My God. My God, that's with tantrums and everything. And he gets mad, his face doesn't turn red, it turns more orange. It's, it's odd, it's just odd. What, what the hell is this nightmare that I'm living through? Anyway, this wall thing, I mean, whatever, whatever. The problem is not the wall, Don. The problem is you said distinctly a thousand times, don't worry about it, we're going to build a wall, Mexico will pay for it. You said that so many times, Mexico will pay for it, 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 Mexico will pay for it. Now you're saying, uh, I'm going to build a wall and you're going to pay for it. What? Yes, I'm going to move funds around, so we're not going to build some schools, and we're not going to do anything with the opioid crisis. We're going to take money out of that, and oh, the, the drug trafficking. Oddly enough, we're going to take money out of that, and we're going to take it out of the military, so that we're not developing new programs and new support for our military. 
We're going to take that. We're going to build a wall with that. That money. So, uh, okay. So the money that I pay out of my taxes, now you're going to build a wall with my money. Okay. You lied to me. You fucking lied to me is what you did. So I don't know how any of the supporters can be like, oh, it's a crisis. It's an immediate crisis. And I'm making it a media crisis because they wouldn't give me what I wanted. So now I'm going to make it a crisis. Come on, man. What the hell's going on here? <sighs> okay, anyway, here's here's the theme of, of today's show. And, you know, sometimes I, I think I really should have, be, have been a preacher because I enjoy standing up uh, in front of people behind a pulpit. It just gives me power, and I like that. Um, but here's the deal. I mean, I, I just, I, I so much long for the day, not that it's ever really occurred before, but I long for the day when everybody can get along. I mean, I mean, everybody gets along, everybody gets along. Nobody, nobody's out to do anybody else any harm. The day that we say that, all right, I have my opinion, you have your opinion and that's cool. Um, eh. I just I, I I long for that that together peaceful thing, and unfortunately we have a president in the office right now, and it has nothing to do with policy whatsoever. A guy that just uh, seeks revenge is angry, calls people's names, and tries to manipulate them and shape things uh, not according to what the people want, but to what he wants or what he thinks his thirty three percent base wants. It's just like it's so political, man. It's so political. I, I, I can't. I can't. I've talked about this before in the show. I know there's supposed to be a second coming. Uh, people of religious uh, faith uh, tell me that uh, there's a day when uh, everything will, someone will come down from a mountain. Um, I don't know if it's going to be on a ski lift or, or what, but someone comes down from a mountain who is wise, an elder person who's been alive for like 300 years living in the mountain with goats and sheep. They come off the mountain, they come on down into society and, and they preach and they, and they turn everybody's heads and go, Oh my God. Oh my God. There's love. There's love. There's love in the air. I, I, I'm waiting for this person. You can stay at my house. You can stay in the guest room. Come down off your mountain and start preaching love and peace to everybody. Where are you? I'm starting to think you don't exist. Don't, don't do that to me. Come down off your high horse. Meld into society and do things. Do good things. Do things where all you got to do is cock your head a little bit and you look like a puppy dog and everybody goes, oh my God, how cute that person is. I must follow that person. You know, our society... Our, our natural human instinct, for some reason, is, is, is cultish. I, we're like packs of dogs. We, we must have other dogs around us. We must have other people around us. We can't exist. We can't be, we can't be credible or interesting or valid without other people validating us. Someone has to say to us, you're a good person. I like you. I love you. We need that. That's what this human being thing was. I don't know why, but that was the way we were made. We need validation. So when gang members come to you and, and cult uh, uh, leaders and, and they, they find your vulnerability and everybody's got it. And they start saying, There's, you know, you're a good person. You're really a good person. I want you to be with us. We will love you. We will we'll kiss you. We'll give you sex, whatever you want. Just join our cult and we, you will be so happy here. People who are looking for, for an identity, for a place to go, they will join the cult and they will do, and then they'll get brainwashed because, because if you're a cult follower, you're brainwashable. Your brain can be washed. It can be washed and, and, and washed. So be careful. I like to be brainwashed by a nice person though. Someone who comes down from a mountain. Who is, who is a, a person of nature, who is one with the land, who says, I embrace this planet. It's the only, we don't have, we don't have other places on Mars and on the moon. There's no communities of, there's no Arby's. I know they have the meats, but they don't have the places on Mars or on the moon. We're stuck on this planet. We're stuck here. So you've got to embrace this planet. You've, you've got to make sure it's healthy all the time. But we're not doing that. 
because the human race is somewhat assholish. Oh yes, we're assholish. We're out for ourselves. We just want to make money. We're assholish. We don't care about the planet. That planet's fine. It's a big, big chunk of rock. We're good. We're assholish. We don't care about other people. If other people aren't doing well, it's their problem, not mine. Let's make sure I do well. We're assholish. We are. We are. We let people who divide us uh, run things. We're assholish. No question about it. I mean, how could you let someone do that? How in your right mind could you let somebody who wants to divide you and manipulate you, how could you let them lead you? That's cultish. Like, whatever you do, whatever you say, I shall follow you. That's cultish. All right, you see, that's why I wanted to be a a preacher. I'm so, so good at it. Even with a cold, I think I'm good at that. I, I, I can't assemble furniture. I can't put the batteries in, in, in toys. I, I, I've, I can never open the battery compartment. I'm not good at that stuff. But I'm good at preaching. Somewhat. Anyway, this weekend, uh, there's an event uh, taking place. And uh, we'll tell you about it right now. Mm, thus, our guests join us. Hello, how are you today? We're doing well, and you? I'm doing very well. Connie Harshaw and Pastor Reginald Davis join us because yes. uh, this coming weekend is a very interesting uh, time. That's when the Freedom uh, Bell continues to to ring, and this is at the uh, First uh, Baptist Church. Uh, tell us about this event. Well, um, this is Connie. Good morning to you and all of your listeners. Uh, the Historic First Baptist Church, organized in 1776, um, we are uh, supported by the Let Freedom Ring Foundation, which was launched last year. The, the Historic Freedom Bell uh, has been rung uh, by the President and First Lady um, to open the museum, but it now resides in the tower of the Historic First Baptist Church. Mm-hmm. And we use it as a symbol for justice, equality, and freedom. And so we have an inclusive uh, congregation. We ask people to come in and to ring that bell to remind the country that there's more that unites us than that separates us. So this weekend, uh, our Pastor Davis will host the first female president of William and Mary, Dr. Catherine Rowe, mm-hmm. who will lead the students and alumni. Uh, in ringing that bell for freedom, justice, and equality. Wonderful, wonderful. And, uh, Pastor, uh, this is a remarkable event. I know we spoke last year about this. Yes, uh, we uh, want people to understand that the uh, history of First Baptist Church, founded in 1776, uh, that history continues. And we know with all of the problems in our country and around the world, uh, a lot of the divisions that are happening, uh, we just want to remind people uh, that there is a more excellent way if we all uh, commit ourselves to that. And so we uh, want this bill to symbolize people coming together, working together uh, to continue uh, to make our nation a more perfect union. And so the first president... Uh, of the female president of right. the College of William and Mary. She's coming. Mm-hmm. And because uh, we want to remind students and the next generation uh, that we have to continue this struggle. Uh, it's not necessarily what you've gained. It's also meaningful for what you can retain. So we want people to retain yeah. and not lose the gains that we've made in the past. Well, that's the problem. You know, it, it's, it's attitude retention, too, because when there is an event like this, and you're swept into this this unity, you feel very good. You feel very, very released, emancipated, loving. It's a wonderful, wonderful feeling to be amongst a crowd like that. And it's almost like going to church because it's wonderful. And then when you leave, it's like back to the real world and you're and it's and it's not as good anymore. And I just wish somehow 
that the good feelings that are put forth during an event like this stayed with us. Um, I, I, to me, that's that's the message: is is letting that power stay with you outside of those walls. Absolutely, Ron? and this is right. Yes, and this Ron, is why okay. we. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, go ahead, Connie. Okay. Connie. Go ahead, Connie. Hello. Oh, we lost Connie. Connie. Yes. Oh, there we are. Oh, okay. Go ahead. We wait on you. Oh, I'm sorry, Ron. <laughs> I think that you raise a very good point. Um, that's why we launched this initiative beyond February yes. because we don't want it to stop in the 28 days. We want it to continue beyond February. Um, we've hosted several. Um, the Historic First Baptist Church has hosted several honorary guests. Uh, Rosa Parks, Dr. King, uh, Bishop Curry, and uh, we have opened the doors to everyone. We are an inclusive congregation, mm -hmm. and we want everyone to come in so that that feeling does last yes. all year. Yes, that's, that's, that's where the magic would happen, and uh, I almost wish on a daily basis that, that uh, someone could uh, talk to all of us every day, and and it wouldn't be to negate what we live through, but to but to put a proper balance on it, proper perspective. But um, in any event, uh, yes, it's it's a wonderful thing. Is is there any way that we can? Of course, we can't all go there. <laughs> We'd like to, but I don't think it's the building would would hold that many people. But uh, how do we? Is there a place we can go to see what actually occurs there? You, you actually can. We have a website. Uh, it is firstbaptistchurch1776.org. Okay. And uh, within moments, we will have things uh, uploaded on the site. Good. You may even get a chance to witness the bell ringing. So um, we want to make sure that everyone does go online and take a look at uh, our site for the historic First Baptist Church. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. Uh, any parting words today? Well, we just want people to understand that when you come to ring the bell, uh, we want this to be in your heart. Yes. Uh, when you talk about how can we keep this feeling, we can keep this feeling by keeping it in our hearts. And so even though we go back out into the, the real world, we have to make sure that 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 feeling is in our heart, and then we can part that to, to other people by giving them encouraging words, by letting them know uh, that we are better than this, that we can make a difference. And uh, I was just reading the other day when it talks about small things. Small things uh, do matter. Yeah. And so uh, whatever people can do to better the lives of other people, that's helping uh, to keep that feeling, that freedom, the justice, the equality, yeah. all of those things must first resonate within our hearts, and then we can transmit that on uh, to the larger society. Yeah, I agree. I, I'll tell you a very quick story. Uh, bells represent freedom to us. I don't know how that happened, but it does. And I remember on Sundays when I was growing up, and I was not a churchgoer, uh, on, but on Sundays, the, the bell on the local church would ring, and then we'd hear the bell from another church in the distance at about the same time, and everything got very quiet. You would just hear the bells, and it was very peaceful. Mm -hmm. But at that moment, just once a week, unfortunately, but at that moment, you kind of in your mind said, man, I wish it was always like this. Uh, this. When those mm -hmm. bells went, I thought everybody was hearing the bells, and I think they were. I wish we had that now where um, all uh, all institutions would, would ring a bell at a certain time, and people would just say, this is the way I want it all the time. I, th I think we need to have that kind of uh, connection again. Yeah. Well, we can do that. I mean, uh, yeah. what you just uh, indicated, we, we can do that. We have to, we have to push toward that. We have yeah. to, uh, 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 you know, remind institutions yes. uh, that we are still in the process of forming a more perfect union. Right. And so, therefore, whatever helps us to get there, if bell ringing. Uh, will, you know, help to uh, synthesize us in such a way that we are thinking about a better future, yeah. then let's push toward that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We're, we're very, simple, very simple people. It doesn't take much to make us stop and think for a moment. And that's sometimes <laughs> all it yes. takes. Some of us simpler right. than others, unfortunately. <laughs> anyway, uh, one more time, the website <laughs> that we can visit. 
That's First Baptist Church, 1776.org. Great. Thank you to the both of you, and thank you for what you do as well. I, I, I assume you realize that what you do is more impactful than, than can be realized. So thank you very much. Thank you for having You're us welcome. on your thank show. Thank you, Ron. All right. Bye-bye. 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 There you go. There you have it. Another show in the files of life. I'll be back again the next time a weekday rolls around, which is rather soon. Until then, come down off the mountain. I wish you peace. Peace.